Today on Logan Lee Adventures is day two of our Chicago time. That means more deep dish pizza, different neighborhoods to explore like Chinatown, more spectacular architecture, especially this time with a whole river cruise and immersing ourselves into the world of Chicago's art and nature. Autumn is truly the best time for this Midwest metropolis, so let's go. It's day two of our Chicago adventures and we're gonna kickstart off at the CTA, which you know me, I love public transit. I love exploring different public transit when I'm in a different city and their systems. And Chicago, I must say, has one of the best public transit systems in the US. I mean, it's right up there. I can only think of one other city that thou shall not be named because this is a Chicago vlog, okay? So Chicago, this they have such a great transit system. Their CTA, their underground metro, connects the whole city really well. And then every other like blanks is connected by the bus. So it runs quite frequently, I say. We're here at one of the main stations called Grant. This is just literally like around the corner from my hotel. And we're gonna take this all the way to Chinatown to explore and start the day off with some dim sum. So arrived to Chinatown and it looks so cool already. All right, I cannot wait to get down there and explore that. Chinatown and look the gate every iconic Chinatown in North America has and now we're in and also cool building too Damn, that's Obama here. And look, Michelle Obama as well. And Chicago's iconic beats. We didn't even know. So we didn't even know that Chiu Huang is this iconic bakery in Chicago. We just walked in because I love Cantonese Chinese bakeries because of all these really goodness. And now we have to get quite a bunch because Damn, they'd they be repping by Michelle and Barack here. A few things, we got a peanut mochi ball. How oh. cute it is. A lotus moon, uh, what's this again? Okay. A lotus moon cake because it is autumn for the autumn moon festival. Portuguese egg tart from Macau because Classic. I always eat these chocolate mousse that you really wanted, but then I wanted a strawberry mousse. So we got both of them. It doesn't matter what time of day it is, it may be 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 a.m. that is. And we'll have tarts, we'll have cakes because in Asian culture we just eat whichever, whenever, at least I do, for breakfast, lunch, dinner. There are certain things that you just eat at certain times, but like the rolls. This is so yummy. Yeah, as a kid, we used to eat these all the time. And I never took it out with a tin bowl. I just eat it with a tin bowl, like this. Like We're exploring one of the parks of Chinatown, Ping Tom Memorial Park. And it is full autumn here, red leaves, 
with these beautiful columns. And already the Chicago River is right beside the park as well. It's actually right there. What a lovely day to leisurely stroll through the neighborhood. Can we get dim sum? I know, I'm so excited for dim sum. <laughs> We've got to explore at first. Ping Tom Memorial Park was named in honor of the leading force behind its creation, Chinatown's most noted civic leader, Ping Tom himself. So Ping Tom was a lifelong resident of Chinatown and became a president of several businesses in the community here after earning degrees in economics and law from Northwestern University. So in 1984, he and other business leaders formed the Chinese American Development Corporation and this private real estate firm transformed a 32-acre rail yard site into Chinatown Square, which is now a $100 million residential and commercial expansion of Chinatown. I mean, if that's not the American dream, I don't know what is because that's a positive impact on this marginalized community and helping it grow and succeed like no wonder there's a whole friggin park dedicated to him this is so cool in chinatown squares there's sculptures of the chinese zodiacs all around the square so i'm going to try to find the monkey because i was born in the year of the monkey oh you're in happy your room was born in the year of the dog can you see that the accurate this is so crazy. Like, this is your rune to a T. Sharp tongues when filled with righteous indignation. This is triggering me already. And can be most stubborn and unyielding. Gosh. How cultural it is here in Chinatown. Especially how there's things like this that describes and showcases the inventions of Chinese culture such as the invention of compass that's so cool the invention of gunpowder that's a popular one that we know there's murals here there's such a great public space area and really like you can feel the community here I don't know the drama because we're gonna go to dim sum at triple crown for dim sum and then we were walking down the street. We were like, okay, let's check out this bakery. Let's check out this. And then we see original Triple Crown. And it's a dim sum restaurant too. What's, what's the story back here? Does anybody know? What's the, I want to know what's the tea behind this because you wouldn't have, and they're literally like a few steps from each other. The Triple Crown and the original Triple Crown. And now we're not sure which one to go to cause yeah, they open at the same time too. Great view with the table by the window here at the Triple Crown restaurant for dim sum. And we have checked out our things, ready to continue our Sunday's traditions. We're excited, we're starting the architecture tour, boat cruise of Chicago. So that means we're gonna go up and down the river on this boat, as you can see, and then get a tour of the architecture of this great city. 
and cushy right up front ready i'm so excited you know how much i love architecture you know how much i've been enjoying chicago so i cannot wait to see all of this up close and personal on the river as we cruise down it's like an hour and a half journey and i can't wait to learn more about these different buildings because uh, just walking around chicago has been such a treat but you know i gotta i gotta learn about these buildings because obsessed right <laughs> Doing this river cruise really made me think of Martha Thorne's essay on how Chicago may have been branded the nation's second city, but in her eyes it was always number one. I mean, just look at the privileged setting. Located on the southwest shores of Lake Michigan with parks and beaches that extend for more than 40 freaking kilometers along the shimmering lakefront, it creates this natural backdrop that's truly hard to beat. And also, if we're going to talk about undeserved nicknames, I mean, I know I've called it the Windy City, like everybody has called it the Windy, Windy City, but it was only originally given to Chicago not because of the strong blast that blows across the plains from, you know, the Midwest and down the avenues, but because of its boastful politicians and their overly enthusiastic promotion of the city, which is so funny to me. I learned that from our speaker on this cruise. And in reality, Chicago doesn't even make the list of 30 windiest cities in the US. Perhaps that's the thing that Chicago really excels at is its architecture. Now, as you can see from this trip, the city skyline is constantly evolving and Chicago has many wonderful spaces beyond the gleaming skyscrapers and the landmark buildings that I absolutely already love from Frank Lloyd Wright, Louis Sullivan and Mies van der Rohe. There are real gems to be discovered by those who take the time to just dig a little deeper and behind the facades of some of Chicago's best known buildings, surprises await. And you really learn that on this architectural cruise. It's just the skeletal structure of the buildings design. Yeah. 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 This entire complex is employed to attract residents back to the central business district of Chicago, which we call the Loop because of the shit and draw them back. So who's going to give them all of the resources of an entire neighborhood in a single complex? Does that look like housing up at the top, parking right below, office tower connected behind, movie theater, corner store, dry cleaners, restaurants, retail space, even a place to park your boat. And everything that you could possibly need all in one place was like a city within a city. This is actually the site of the deadliest maritime disaster in the Great Lakes history. So a few things stood out to me learning about Chicago and the architecture and the river on this cruise. So for the Chicago River, in an effort to prevent sewage from backing up into the city's water supply, the 251 kilometer long Chicago River, yep, the one that we're on right now, became one of the first rivers, like not just in the US, but in the world to have its flow reverse can you imagine that reversed in 1900 which is no mean feat it now runs away from lake michigan rather than into it through the heart of the city to ultimately connect it with the mississippi river now every year the river which effectively dissects the city is dyed shamrock green to celebrate saint patrick's day which i would love to be here for one year hopefully by the bridge house in case a random tall ship came through random tall ship traffic is down so we only send the bridge tender up into their bridge house and there is a plan to bridge opening there's a lot of bridges as you can see that were gliding underneath and coming out of and the thing is, Chicago's first movable bridge was built in 1834 and today there are 50 
52 whopping bridges within the city limits and 43 of them which are still in operation more than any other city in North America. Yep, so take it in. Originally, they were operated on demand, but now they lift about 40 times a year. Uh, she said between April and November, which is pretty cool. The majority are Chunyin Bascal bridges with counterweights that take roughly 8 to 12 minutes to raise and lower. Now, Chicago may have originally struggled to compete with the big hitters on the east and west coast, but today it's carved out an identity of its own and brings together the best of both worlds, including a handful of sandy beaches apparently. It's the autumn, so we're not gonna go, but it's nice to know that there's there. Chicago being this Midwest marvel is the birthplace of the skyscraper and home to bold and brilliant architecture. And then on closer to the ground, it's peppered with first-rate museums and public art as well as urban art by talented residents. And that's not to mention comedy clubs and bluesy jazz bars. It's this city is at once international and local, lofty and down to earth. And then there's a laid back boutique for every luxury fashion house and classic US diner as well, you know, complete with the spinning stools and the bright bulbs. And for every immaculately designed Asian inspired restaurant, it also supports small businesses and treasures the old as well as the new, with family run hotels cropping up in classic heritage buildings. Literally, Chicago, I just feel like it has it all. And being located on the southwest shore of Lake Michigan, Chicago has this coastal feel to it while still being very much a Midwest metropolis. So it's just has, yeah, it really has the vibe. And dare I say, it's kind of underrated when people think of the US, you usually think of, you know, West Coast hitters like Los Angeles, right? San Francisco. And then you have Chicago's arrival-ish to more to the east, which is like New York. But this city really holds its own. I'm gonna head into our dock. What a skyline. It's the Windy City! I walk into Trader Joe's because we're feeling peckish, right? In Trader Joe's, I wish this was international, but they only have it in the US. So whenever I'm in a state with Trader Joe's, wherever there's Trader Joe's, I have to pop in. And the first thing that comes to like my nose when I popped in is like the, the delicious scent of pumpkin spice and pumpkin in general in Trader Joe's. I'm so excited because this is my season. I love pumpkin flavor anything and they have so many sections dedicated for it this season. So, I mean, take a look here. Pumpkin spice batons, pumpkin alfredo sauce. I need more room in my luggage for this. Apple and pumpkin hand fries. I think I can get some of these snacks to try. Pumpkin spread. This looks so good. Pumpkin salsa. I didn't even know that that's a thing. There's so many pumpkin flavor. Like organic raw pumpkin vinegar. Cinnamon bun spread. Ooh, that's that's a nice cinnamon spread. Pumpkin spice rubles tea. Pumpkin candle. Obviously. I have that already. Pumpkin bread mix. Pumpkin puree classic. Pumpkin pancake mix, 
Even pumpkin dog treats, y'all. I don't even have a dog and I want to buy this. <laughs> I mean, I love living in Europe, but you just can't beat the variety that they have at Trader Joe's here. Like, my eyes are amazed. We're walking around Chicago on a different side of Chicago, not near our hotel, which is part of like the Magnificent Mile. So in contrast, this is the Wabash Art Corridor, which is basically different alleyways, different areas of the city where you can just see street art plastered all around with these magnificent murals. Chicago this time of the year really is something else. I mean, this park. So we're just at the end of the Millennium Park and it is so gorgeous everywhere around. Leaves everywhere. This is like my autumn leaf. Having picnic amongst the fallen leaves. And then this walkway too. I am just so smitten by this city. It's like really easy to fall in love with Chicago. Like so many endless great views of Chicago. So this is the Buckingham Fountain which is at the end of the park, well here at the end of the park, in the park, you can see such panoramic views of Chicago from here. And then from the other side, is the lake. Oh, okay, don't culturally criticize me for what I'm about to tell you, okay? Because Yurun is so hyped up about this. I've never had it. He's like, okay, I gotta try it. So we're getting Shake Shack. <laughs> Comment below if you have tried Shake Shack before. Does it live up to the hype? Because I don't know. I'm an In and Out Burger boy myself. But you know, In and Out Burger is like only on the West Coast. So Shake Shack it is. I've never had Shake Shack. I don't know what the hype is about it. And we're gonna we're gonna find out because Yarun is obsessed. I'm telling you, this boy is obsessed. He keeps talking about it. So I'm excited. I mean, I'm open-minded. You know, we always love our U.S. food, fast food, uh, because walking around Chicago, you really realize how many fast food options there are compared to living in the Netherlands, where there's like your standard McDonald's, Burger King. But here there's like every other block something something new something different so pairing up with this stroll this beautiful autumnal stroll we're going to get some fast food at Shake Shack we wanted tacos and we were waiting in line and then the police came and I guess they don't have like a license so they're just packing up the taco truck and they're literally driving away right now like, I shook it. Like, what about the people who just like order tacos? <laughs> okay, well, that was like part of our Shake Shack stop. So I think this is a sign to just go to Shake Shack directly. <laughs> Y'all, this is crazy. All of these trucks are not even licensed. Like, I, how many trucks are there? I thought this was like a casual ding ding. This was like part of like the Chicago corruption that we heard apparently. 
They're literally all packing and going. Like that's that's cray cray. I did not expect Shake Shack to be this fancy. What is this location of Shake Shack? Damn! It's like eating with a view. Look at this. Looking for the bathroom of this place. And also get to explore and walk up these gorgeous marbles. Farewell. Urban exploration. The bathroom is this way. Really cool building. Yes, this used to be a swimming pool because it's so deep. And like swimming lanes as well. This is a gorgeous swimming pool. Oh, it's for the poor. Shake Shack to the Chicago Athletic Association. Turns out this is a historical building. As we saw and can see, that is also home to the Chicago Athletic Association. So it's like an athletic club. Look how beautiful these wood pedals is. There's like workout rooms. This is such a cool place. Mm. Wow. The shroom burger is bomb. And this is the cheeseburger that is has apple, maple, smoked bacon. And since it's a seasonal, they got the pumpkin patch milkshake, which already won my heart. So, Shake Shack, a new favorite customer. With this temple-like facade and two bronze lines standing guard, the entrance to the Art Institute sets the tone for the treasures within. Walking up at the glorious Art Institute of Chicago. I mean, this building itself is just magnificent. It's so grand in stature, and I'm sure this is just like the first step in, not even like into the galleries yet. So I'm sure the artwork itself is going to be spectacular. Look at that stained glass window there, and the skylight just bringing in all of this light into the foyer. Wow, what a museum. The collection here is spectacular. I mean, a gallery just for Dutch, Dutch art itself. Some Delft blue action. This museum is also an art school, was founded in 1879, basically eight years after the Great Chicago Fire, and has had voracious expansion since then. And the collection has grown too, so from a series of plaster casts to you know some casual 300,000 works, including the 12th century Buddhas, Aztec coronation stones, and surrealist sculpture, and 20th century stained glass. That's a magnificent Georgia O'Keeffe. Huge. Just hanging here. Okay. 
I love how the modern wing of the Art Institute of Chicago is completely different. Bright, airy, white blank walls. Of course, modern art everywhere. It's wild because I've been at this museum for over two hours already and I'm still not finished. There's just so many to see over three floors of epic artwork. <laughs> This is the stock exchange, or used to be the trading room of the stock exchange in Chicago. It still is well preserved with all the details from the roof to the hardwood floors. I definitely did not know that the Art Institute of Chicago is connected to the stock trading floors. That is so epic that we get to explore two places in one. So this was the original Chicago Stock Exchange built. I'm trying to find an exit and that's made impossible because this museum is so huge. It's fantastic. I'm now here for three hours and a half so far but still lost. Fine Arts Building, which is this historical building here, houses many things, different plays, different events, and on the second floor, a permanent bookstore called Exile in the Bookshop. Any case, Exile in the Bookstore. And we're walking up these stairs. Actually, it's called Exile in the Book of Ville. Ooh, there it is now. This is such a gorgeous bookstore that overlooks part of the park on Michigan Avenue and Exile in Bookville has all these different book events and copies of everything that you can think of. Of the city, like just walking around and seeing that, so awesome. This is so 
something so romantic about the trains running high above the city like that. Like, it's just so cool to be on the ground, so see the trains up there, and then no matter where you walk, up and down, this whole street, you can just see the trains as they come along. All right, deep dish pizza and lose. Let's go. Now this place gets packed, so come at opening time if you can, because they don't take any reservations. There are a few locations around Chicago, but this one is like literally one minute away from a hotel, so we have to check it out. And look how cute it is. Quite historical as well and I can't wait to try the deep dish pizza here and see what's the difference between deep pitch dish pizza here and a deep dish pizza at say Pizzeria Uno but I'm not gonna I'm just gonna try not to compare because I want to just taste it for myself and see you know the joys and wonders of Luz Every Lou Malnati's pizza is handmade from scratch using the finest and freshest ingredient. Every year, the Malnati team hand selects California vine ripened tomatoes for the perfect sweet and tangy taste. The exclusive sausage blend is seasoned to their exact specifications. The fresh mozzarella cheese comes from the same small dairy farm that has been supplied by Lou Malnati's for over 40 years and their family's secret recipe for this flaky, buttery crust has been passed down from generation to generation, which is why I must say that this is hands down my favorite deep dish in the city so far. in the tallest building or what used to be the tallest building for over 20 years in the US that is until the One World Trade Center overlapped the Willis Tower and we're gonna go all the way up 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 the Willis Tower to the sky deck now the sky deck is this observation platform which I'll take you I'll show you around but getting there we have to walk through this really cool basically mini museum of Chicago so it takes you through the timeline of Chicago you can see we kind of have it like all to ourselves weirdly enough uh, you can see like the different architecture the history of Chicago how they start building it out how they start how what happened with the great fire of Chicago this is like, the history which I love and then we get to the Willis Tower the story of the Willis Tower itself is it Into the CTA, which is the subway, albeit a cleaner version, very polished version of the Chicago subway. So cool. <laughs> On my way to Garfield Park. We're gonna try a Chicago style hot dog, that's for sure. Just hanging out with the Obamas. How you doing, Michelle? Pictures in the world. 
You're riding up this 1,450-foot modern marvel in one of the tower's 104 elevator cars. Your trip to the sky deck will only take about a minute. That means your elevator is traveling at a speed of more than 24 feet per second. The tower opened its doors in 1973 and held the title of the world's tallest building for 25 years. The west antenna reaches 1,730 feet above the Chicago streets. We're now passing 850 feet in San Francisco's Transamerica Pyramid, 970 feet in the Yokohama Landmark Tower, Japan's tallest building, 1,062 feet in Paris's stunning Eiffel Tower, the Bank of China Tower in Hong Kong, 1,250 feet in the Empire State Building in New York. And now we're here, 103 stories up. Welcome to the top. Oh, we're so high up. This is so crazy to even think about it. Like literally staring up at these <laughs> top of these skyscrapers. Can you can you see people down there? Because they're too they're too little to see. We can see some cars, but that's that's it. to enter in it's so cool it's like literally top to bottom all glass and it's like prime lighting right now so we are obviously going to have a quick shoot in there here we go timed it so that we'll get golden hour right in the sky deck which was perfect because it was so beautiful in there and trippy just looking down on a like my feet on glass and just seeing through right downstairs but now we're going to time it for when the city gets dark and all the building's lights starts turning on Slowly starting to get lit up. Look. As Chicago shines bright, I hope you've enjoyed the vlog of our time in Chai Town. Hit subscribe, give this video a like, and leave me a comment below because there's more adventures to come. So stay tuned for what we get up to on our last part in this great American city.